Hey everybody, it's me, Peter Alvarez, my first appearance is your key to the impossible ones, and thank you guys for, for coming back to the blindness.edu segment on the Perseverance Entertainment Network, and the Perseverance Network in general. Thank you guys so very, very much for coming back, and something I want to talk to you guys about today, something that's very important, and the reason why I'm doing this is because I believe in you guys, I tell you guys that I know from personal experience you can do incredible things, whether you have blindness, visual impairment, or not. Um... I'm going to be a little bit blunt, I'm going to be a little bit bold in this particular video uh, or this particular podcast in whichever direction you happen to be viewing it in. And um, the reason being is because, like I said, I believe in you guys and I can tell you um, from experiences, from talking with other people, all sorts of different things, you can do incredible things. So let's get right into it. So I think this is very, very important because... Um, we re really as you know specifically if we're talking about those with blindness visual impairment and then those who don't have blindness visual impairment uh we tend to make excuses as to why we can't do things and particularly what i want to focus on but it can be translated into different walks of life is that we we as persons with blindness visual impairment we tend to use our disabilities or our ability to not fully see or to see at all as a means of saying that we can't do certain things because we can't see uh we can't get into work because we can't see we can't go and do what we love to do or what we want to do or what we're passionate about because we can't see and i want to tell you guys it is such a freaking lie because i've seen so many people in so many different walks of life who use so many different uh, pieces of technology so many different pieces of, te of uh, different techniques, uh, all sorts of different things that are doing incredible things despite being partially or fully blind. And and I'm I you know the thing is is that for the longest time in my personal story, I'll give you guys a little bit of my personal background, and then we'll continue on with this. Is that. Uh, for the longest time, I have been told that what I do is impossible. What I do should not be doable by someone of my vision acuity. My vision acuity is less than 20 or 1600, which basically means I don't see clarity. Uh, I have the vision acuity of basically I see very, very large, defined objects otherwise i don't have clarity uh so like my computer screen in front of me i know it's there because of the light that's it and you know what i do i do art i do visual pixel art and how i do this is i use screen readers i have a past memory of rgb code so i use it so i do not need to visually know what color i'm putting in each spot and people tell me well, you shouldn't be able to do that because how would you do that? And I told him, I said, it's just what I do. It's just what I love to do. And I'm telling you guys this. The reason why I'm telling you guys this, and I don't want you guys to, to think I'm saying this, well, since I can do it, you can do it. No, what I'm saying is that I found what I love to do. I found what I was passionate about and what I love to what I love to go out there and do every single day and to promote to people and show to people and make people and all. And I just said to myself, I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna figure out a way. I'm gonna figure out a way because there's always a way. Particularly that we're getting more technologically advanced. We're getting more connected. We're getting more, you know, devices that we can transfer different work on and things like that. We can do it. For instance, um, you know, a lot of people ask, you know, how do, you know, persons with blindness visual impairment become, you know, musicians? Um, well, musicians, there's, there's, uh, you know, music braille. There's obviously it's a, it's a uh, tactile oriented type thing, depending on what you go into. Uh, you know, we have great hearing for being able to tell pitches and different types of keys. I mean, there's all sorts of different stuff. I mean, we're talking about other, other types of industries. We're talking about maybe like packaging or, or, uh, moving stuff around or organizing or all these different types of things. There are techniques out there that people use that make it so that this is not an excuse. I mean, so many people out there that are using blindness and visual impairment as a consistent excuse as to why they can't do something. And this is bullcrap because 
you know, just because your eyes don't work doesn't mean you can't walk, doesn't mean you can't talk, doesn't mean you can't hear, doesn't mean you can't think. I'm telling you guys right now because I know there's something incredible, there's something awesome, there's something epic, there's something really, really cool that you guys want to do. And I'm, and I'm most likely sure of it that in some portion of you doing it or in general of not doing it, you have used your disability as a means of an excuse. And you can't do that anymore because the only person you're going to be hurting is yourself by telling yourself you can't do anything by being blind. And like I said, this translates into communities that don't have blindness visual impairment for all these different types of excuses. Like, you know, I don't have, um, for instance, the biggest thing is I don't have enough money, uh, you know, for those without blindness visual impairment. And this is even true for those with blindness visual impairment. But, but the primary thing is that, you know, well, I don't have enough money or I don't have enough resources. I don't have enough this. I don't have enough that. Well, then don't stop talking about it. Stop talking about how you don't have it and go out there and get it. Go out there and make your opportunities happen. Talk to people, men, you know, get mentors, volunteer, make videos, talk Put your conversations online. Like I said, we're getting more technologically advanced. We have more opportunity to have voices. We have more opportunities to take our voice and spread it across the world so that we can create as many opportunities and as many connections as humanly possible. Now, um, getting back to the blindness and visual impairment oriented thing is that this is what really, this, is, this truly is becoming one of my hugest pet peeves is really the idea of hearing people say that they can't do something that they're passionate about or that they love to do because they're, they, they have blindness visual impairment. And I tell them, I tell them, I said, when you find something that, that you truly love, that something is like you're really passionate about and you just, you, you, you burn to do it and you want to do it and it's incredible and it's awesome and it's epic and you have this great idea and everything like that, right? You're not going to notice that you're blind. You're not going to, you, your first thought is going to be, how do I get this done? How do I create it? How do I do it? You know, in general, because like, l let me, let me go back to like how I was doing stuff. I was losing my vision progressively from being visually impaired to 90% blind as I am today. During this process, I went through a, a situation where I gave up. I did not know if I was ever going to be able to do art again because I was my vision was decreasing. My mindset at the time, because the general society was that when you got to a certain point of vision loss, you couldn't do art anymore. And I had that for a long time where I didn't do art and it sucked. It sucked so bad. And I finally, one day, I'm just like, you know what? I'm going through way too much and I have too many ideas. I am not done with this yet. And what I did is I quite literally went on to Google. I went on to YouTube. I went on to all sorts of different platforms and just searched out crap tons of different types of art forms. I'm like, what is tactile? What is uh, screen reader oriented? What is technology oriented? What is something that I can take with my current capabilities and I can turn it into something really, really cool? And here's the thing is that when I was going through it, I found pixel art on YouTube. And I thought this was a fantastic idea for a number of different reasons. The first thing is that using a grid in any type of program with a screen reader is fantastic. Because, I mean, for those of you who haven't used like things like um, Numbers or uh, Excel or anything like that, uh, the grids on, you know, with the screen reader, it will tell you where you are on the grid and things like that. So using that idea of having a grid was fantastic. Then I thought, okay, I got a grid. Now, how do I make a picture? How do I make colors? How do I make, you know, spatial ideas? Well, this came interestingly because I have the previous knowledge and the previous love of being, of being a spatial uh, visualizer. So I'm able to pre-create or pre-figure um, out how I want something to look. And then I try designating it, putting it on the grid. And I started out with, you know, black and white. Then I did black, gray, and white. Then I did black, gray, white, and blue. And then I kept adding more colors. And I kept adding complexity. And then I finally got to the point where I, fa where I made my first official piece that I thought I was happy with. And it was a sunset. 
It was a 20,000 pixels sunset that was made within two months. And it was colored square by square, pixel by pixel, each part of the grid, one at a time. First time I put that out there. I put that out online. I put that out there on videos. I put that out there to show people. Number of different things happened. I got ahs. I got oohs. I got really cool. And then on top of it, I got, how did you do this? How is it possible? Then I got the other stuff. I got a whole bunch of haters. They're like, this is fake. This this can't be real. You can't be blind to do art and all this great different things. That's why, in particular, I do time-lapse videos on my, on my channel because... Uh, I just, you know, on top of it being fun to show time-lapse videos, I just don't have the time or the energy to, to deal with haters and to deal with, you know, proving this. Because what I do is entirely possible, and I've explained it in many different types of videos. I am too caught up in what I'm passionate about, and I can't... Uh, I can't deal with the haters. And that's the thing, too, is that when you're talking about, you know, using your blindness to visual impairment as an excuse, it's one of two things. And this is this is really what it boils down to, guys. It's, it's either that someone has told you initially that you can't do something because you have blindness to visual impairment and you have heard that so many times it's hard boiled into your brain. Or you personally have tried something that you love to do and you failed once, twice, three times, whatever it is. And you didn't go back to do it. And you didn't go back to keep trying it. And ultimately, there is no failure. There's only one type of instance where there is failure. But if you don't even acknowledge it, if you don't even acknowledge that existence, there is no failure. The only type of point that you can say that you failed on something is when you leave it to die, is when you do not go for it anymore, where you leave it alone and you say, you know what, my dream is dead because I have blindness or visual impairment or because I can't do something or because I don't have this or I don't have that. The moment that you truly fail something is when you leave it to die. And if you keep trying, like let's say if you fail and you keep trying or you fail and you take a little bit of a break and you keep trying, things like that, that is keeping on going. That is not failure, that is learning. And there's a huge difference. Now, <clears throat> the major things is how do I get over the mindset? How do I get over the mindset of, you know, I have been told that because of, blind, because of having blindness visual impairment, I should not be able to do those things. You know what? Take it as a personal challenge. Take it as a personal challenge to tell them, hey, you know what? You, you know, for instance, like someone told me that they had issues writing um, because, you know, they, they couldn't figure out a good way of writing with, uh, you know, their visual disability because they used to they used to write um visually you know write with by hand by pit by pen and they used to write like different articles and things and they won't and you know they're not first in screen readers and they told me they're like well you know i'd love to write a book and you know and i told them i said well you know you can you, you know you can learn how to use screen readers and you can you know write your book and they're like well yeah but you know i'm i i'm not sure because you know society's basically told me that you know, I shouldn't be doing that. And I told him, I said, you know what? I told him, I said, find out who told you that you couldn't do that and tell them, you know what? You're going to be the first person I sell my first book to. And that's the type of mentality that you got to have. And then you push forward and you tell them, you know what? You're going to be the first person I give my art to. You're going to be the first person who I send a book to. You're going to be the first person that I make a video towards or whatever it is. Take it as motivation and how to get around the mindset of yourself of understanding that your blindness visual impairment is stopping you. Take steps consistently to learn your craft. Don't have to be big steps. It could be baby steps. And that's totally okay because every time you progress over a little step or a little bump, it gets better. You get better. You start to continue to realize in a fashion that you can do incredible things. And I'm telling you right now, you can do incredible things. There is no 
type of BS out there that says because you have blindness to visual impairment, you can't do something. And I want you to understand that by leaving in this episode and leaving in this segment of blindness.edu, you can do incredible things. And if you have blindness, visual impairment out there, power to you, okay? Show up the haters. May, give love to the people who support you. Do incredible things. Do the impossible. And let everybody know about it. Because that's what you're passionate about and that's what you love to do. And that's what I think that you really need to to do in life. Is Because if you find something you love and you're passionate about, you're going to go far. And the moment that you take another barrier out of your way about that you can't do it because of blindness, visual impairment, you are going to be unstoppable. So I think that's a good wrap up for now. I'm probably going to make a future episode on this because it's very important. Um, but what I want you guys to do is you guys got any questions, comments, whatever it is, leave it in the comments below of wherever or whenever you hear this or see this video or audio or radio. Let me know in the comments below your thoughts and comments. Otherwise, if you would be so kind, if this is on YouTube, Facebook, whichever, if you can give it a like, favorite or a share, uh, or if you want to become a subscriber, that would be fantastic because you guys are awesome. And I want to help you guys out. And if you want help uh, in future episodes of blindness.edu with different stuff, I encourage you to subscribe. And if you don't want to subscribe, that is totally okay. That is totally okay. Because if I even got your attention just for a few minutes during this show and you heard it all the way through to the end here, I'm happy. So thank you guys so very, very much for being here for the blindness.edu segment. Remember the first experience is your key to the impossible. And I will see you guys in future shows.